Hi, I'm West, and I love talking about the Rangers, and I'm here to talk about Game 17 of the regular season, where the Rangers win 4-1 to over the Arizona Coyotes, and Igor's back. Oh my, I've never been so simultaneously happy and terrified to see the return of an old team, because I have good news and bad news, everybody. The 2021-22 Rangers are back. Also... The 2021-22 Rangers are back, everybody. Man, it's like it was last season. You had Igor bailing us out. You had the shots being comically in favor of the other team. You had the first goal being scored by a person that you're like, really? They get on the board first? It, oh, it was just a lovely throwback to last season. So my entire analysis of the first period could just be two numbers, which is the shots were 17-4 to in favor of Arizona. That is, that could be the entire analysis of the first period. The Rangers took 13 and a half minutes to get a shot on net. I mean, Lord. If the Coyotes would have done nothing offensively with the puck in the second period, we would have only been out shooting them by one. It was that bad in the first. 17 of 17, and Igor, in what could have been, because there were some pretty legitimate, there were some good scoring chances for the Coyotes in the first period. In what could have been very quickly a getaway game on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, Igor Shosturkin stood on his head and held us in this game. Igor played great. This was a return to vintage. Can you say vintage if it was just last season? But a return to last season version of Igor. He held us in this period. He held us in this game, and it was only the first period. So we actually get shots in the second period, and we score a pair. The first one was a four-check, and the Coyotes have it in their zone. And it's just kind of turned over. It's a really bad pass by the Coyotes. And Connor Ingram is now faced with the awful choice of do you touch the puck and just try to make try to make it move in a direction that it isn't currently moving in, or just don't touch it and see what happens. And he chose to try to play the puck and it just fell I mean on the tape of Barkley Gaudreau's stick, and it was so perfectly on the tape. I don't know how Gaudreau didn't just kind of stare at his stick and stare at the puck and go, is that actually on my stick right now? You can't put that on Ingram. That was just awful defense by the Coyotes, which, I mean, is kind of what they're supposed to be. The fact that they're somehow almost in a playoff spot in a season where they were supposed to be just completely bottoming out is very strange so the second goal was adam fox and adam fox alone going sicko mode to make it a two nothing game this was like a minute or so after the Gaudreau goal and he has it and he takes a shot on net and it stopped and then he collects the rebound and then it's a block shot and then he collects the rebound and then he takes another shot and that one goes in and fox dangled through the entirety of the arizona coyotes he has been ridiculous the past few games adam fox his fifth of the season and for a player who's already won an oris this could very easily shape up to be the best year of adam fox's career he looks that good and that confident with the puck and he looks pretty solid in his own end too so before we get into the third period we need to talk about the end of the second because make his advantage ad has the puck and he heads in the offensive zone and he takes a shot on net and connor ingrid comes a mile out of the crease to come try to play the shot and gets hit by Mika's stick and then collapses to the ground and a massive like thing ensues it wasn't a fight but it was a lot of pushing and shoving and a pile up and all right so here is everything about that Mika got a penalty for this play and he just totally shouldn't have this is unfortunate and you hate to see a goalie get hit and the way his head kind of jerked you really don't like to see that, especially for the goaltender, because they are not expecting contact ever. But Ingram really should have been expecting contact on this play. He is way out of the crease. He is nowhere near the blue paint. He could have butterflied and stretched his right leg all the way out, and he still wouldn't have been touching the blue paint. And Mika is... He did nothing wrong. He was not anywhere near the net. He would have skated past it and missed it by a mile had Ingram not gone that far out. And if you're Mika, that's where you're going because you want to be ready to make a quick turn in case there's a rebound because since Ingram is so far out of the blue paint, you can easily get a tuck in if there's a rebound that goes behind him. 
Like, there is no penalty on this play. It is unfortunate contact. You hate to see it. But to give Mika Zibanejad an interference penalty is absolutely ridiculous. So you head into the third period. Rangers are still getting outshot. But you have the 2-0 lead now. And you kill off the penalty from the Mika thing, which was just terrible. And now you're on a power play of your own. And Chris Kreider, uh-oh, is left way too wide open in front of the net. You can't keep making that mistake. Chris Kreider is a tip-in legend. His seventh of the year. For a guy that was moved down to the fourth line like a day or two ago. He has seven goals, guys. Why do we move him down? I, I get that he's a power play merchant. I don't care. The Mika Kreider connection on the power play might go down as one of the best combos in Rangers history. It's that good. So later on in the third period, the Coyotes would not be held completely off the score sheet. Clayton Keller. Man, sometimes you just kind of got to respect the shot. That was a beautiful angle from Clayton Keller. That was not bad. Just was a bit out of position, but Keller just threads a needle and gets a goal. And again, sometimes you just go, you know what? I'm not mad. That was just a beautiful play. The defense didn't have a breakdown or anything. They contained his shot to a really, really hard angle. Again, Igor was maybe a touch out of position and had to kind of get over quickly, but it wasn't egregious or anything. This was just a butte from Clayton Keller to make it a 3-1 game. A little over halfway through the third period, the Rangers have it in the zone. Brennan Schneider fires one on net from the blue line and it's tipped in by Ryan Carpenter for his first as a Ranger to give them a 4-1 lead. And we are not the blue team that blows 4-1 lead. So nice and easy, the Rangers get out of it. So ultimately, you can look at this game in a negative light because after the first 20 minutes, you looked awful. This was the worst start we've had all season. They just couldn't do anything anything offensively they could barely do anything defensively and you were on pace after 20 minutes to get out shot 51 to 12 which hurts to think about and that's true and it was and on top of that against a team that was genuinely designed from birth to be bad or you can look at it as the rangers on the second night of a back-to-back -back with travel come back to madison square garden and they do look bad in the first period, but they right the wrongs, they correct the ship. Your goalie looked fantastic, his best game of the season. And offensively, you had massive contributions from the fourth line. Barkley Gaudreau had a goal in this game, and so did Ryan Carpenter. The fourth line has been low-key fantastic to start this season. And your power play looks good. The offense got a lot better as this game progressed. And again, you know, slow start, you were tired, and you rebounded, you recovered well. If you want a positive, the most positive thing I can say about this game is you started poor, and you recovered, which sometimes the Rangers just kind of start falling over, and then they fall over. Anyway, guys, let's talk about the next game, because the Rangers are getting ready to start a four-game West Coast road trip. Where game times are 10, 10.30, 10.30, and 10. A pretty quiet week for the Rangers. We don't play again until Thursday when we are in Seattle against the Kraken at 10 p.m. Eastern. And I'll be here afterwards to talk about it. But that's all I have to say for the evening. So, thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, go Rangers.